Well, great, man. Uh, start off just kind of, you know, obviously you finish at Daytona. Uh, you know, that that's always a win out there. Just kind of talk to me about, you know, your experience back in full-time seat at Daytona this past weekend. Yeah, man. No, I mean, um, I think, uh, I think we had a, you know, good start to the season. You know, uh, we made the race just like we, you know, we thought we would and, you know, just had a good solid qualifying effort, but, um, yeah, you know, the race for the first time in my career, I, uh, played a little bit of defense the first two stages. I just kind of wanted to ride and, um, you know, put myself in good position. I, all I wanted was a, a, a shot to win, you know, and, um, everyone knows that Daytona, Talladega, the speedways, like you got to get to the end. So I saw the way those guys were, were driving and, you know, they were three, four wide. I was just like, dude, I'm, I need to bail out of this in which it killed me to do it. But I, um, I knew it was for the best of my team, my sponsors and, and, and myself to, uh, to bail out of there just, just so I could give myself a shot. So um, yeah, no, our Panini Chevy was very, very good. It would suck up well in the draft, and um, you know we did everything right. My my pit stops were great, and uh, the the last restart I was seventh with a you know a chance to win. Unfortunately, the uh, the fuel ran out of the pickup, and uh, I basically ran out of gas for about a hundred yards. So um, that kind of killed our day. But at the end of the day, I'm very fortunate for Panini, Bobby Dodder, SS Greenlight. They gave me a great car. I mean. We did everything right. We checked all the boxes and um, just one of those deals, man. We just, you know, it w wasn't our day, but at the end of the day, we got a clean race car, a decent points day uh, with the finish and, and, and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, no, we're, we're excited to go to Fontana. Uh, great way to kick off the year. You know, we uh, put a lot of work in this this all season and um, my team did a really, really good job. And I, I thought I did a good job, put myself in position to win and it just didn't work out, but all in all a very successful weekend. You know, there's always a lot of buildup going into Daytona. You never really know exactly what you've got till you bring it off the trailer and you get it on the track. Now that you know, you guys can put together a fast car and run up top. Uh, what's kind of the mindset heading into Fontana? No, no. I, yeah, I definitely, I definitely believe so. You know, we, um, you know, we're a small race team, but at, at the end of the day, it's, it's a quality over quantity. You know what I mean? Like the, the little amount of people that we do have are, are very qualified to be in their positions, you know, from mechanics to crew chiefs, car chiefs, spotters, you, you know, you name it. Our team is very, uh, is stacked as far as, you know, the amount of years that they've put into this sport and, and the things they've been able to do. So very fortunate to have Jason Miller and all my guys on my team. I think, um, you know, I think our, our Fontana car will, will, will be just fine. And, and, uh, you know, with, with the limited amount of practice and, and the things that go along with, you know, the new world of, of what we live in as far as practice, qualifying and race, you know, you kind of have to know what you got, right before you get there. And um, that's what me and my crew chief have been talking about a lot today is, you know, different setups, springs, that type of thing, because during practice, you don't really have a lot of time or you don't have, uh, you know, the amount of time to make big changes if you're in, you know, if you're in left field, you know what I mean? So, um, but no, I, I feel confident and my crew chief feels confident and uh, we're looking forward to having North, North, South, um, you know, on the, on the race car. And, uh, it's been a while since I've raced Fontana. Fontana is one of my favorite tracks and, uh, just been, it's been too long since I've been there. So I'm definitely confident and look forward to get, getting out there. I got you. So now that we're kind of up to date, I want to take us back a little bit, you know, right. this is your first time back full-time with SS Greenlight since 2019, I believe was the last time Correct. you suited up full-time for them. You ran a lot of races in 2021. Uh, not for SS Greenlight, but you were there with the series for a while. What's that kind of gap been like between these two full-time slots with SSG uh, Greenlight? No, man, it's been, um, it, uh, to be honest with you, like, you know, the last full-time season of every week, you know, being on the grind was 2019. So it's it's been a minute for me personally. And um, when I signed the deal with Bobby to run full-time, you know, I kind of had a little bit of anxiety. I'm like, man, I'm back on the road, you know. I'm living out my suitcase again, which don't get me wrong. Like that's, that's the only lifestyle I've ever known is, is just being on the road racing, you know, state to state, city to city, that type thing. 
you know, so I've, I've really missed it. I've missed my, my NASCAR family, you know what I mean? Like, like seeing crew members, uh, team owners, fans, like for me this weekend to have fans come up to me and go, Gray, you know, it's so good to see you back full time. Like they have no idea what that really means to me because, you know, the last two years has been a complete grind, you know, racing a, uh, a limited schedule, not being in the car week to week. And um, it, it, it definitely affects you, you know, because, you know, I know I have the capability and, and the ability and the confidence in my driving ability to be there. And I feel like I deserve to be there week to week. But at the end of the day, you know, this sport is very humbling. You know, this sport doesn't owe anybody anything. So, you know, for me to show up at Daytona this past weekend and know that I'm full time, I have a ride. I got a great team owner, great crew around me, great partners, great spons- sponsors. It really, uh, it really makes you appreciate, you know, that type of thing, that type of stuff. Because you know, I've been without it for the last couple of years, and um, no, it me- it means the world to me to be back full time, know my schedule, knowing that I'm, you know, getting on a flight on Thursday to go to California, like just the little things that you kind of forget when you're racing at a at a high level or you know whether it's cup xfinity truck like you kind of forget that and then since i've been away from it i've missed it so much so i'm just so happy to be back living out my suitcase hotel to hotel city to city state to state so i'm uh i'm I'm glad to be back man and you know it's interesting because my next question was going to be you know you talk about your back living out of your suitcase traveling state to state that's something uh, and not a lot of guys can say this. That's something you've done essentially your whole life. You know, you're, life. One the, you're one of the youngest winners. Um, and I think three of NASCAR's development series still are. Uh, and you hold several of those records. What, is, what was that kind of like growing up? You know, were there a lot of expectations with that? Uh, just not just for you, but with everybody else around you? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the pressure when it comes to racing, especially at a high level, you know, like I said, whether no matter the series, trucks, Xfinity and Cup, but when, you know, when you're racing for whether it's a high profile team or a low profile team, like, you know, you have those expectations and in in those things that you want to lead up to in which I'm very hard on myself. I really am. Like, I'm a competitor. I want to like if you and me, if you told me right now, hey, I want to run a foot race. I'm going to do everything in my power to beat you. Like I'm a competitor, you know? So what I've learned though, you know, I'm 25 now. Think about it. I've been racing professionally in NASCAR since I was 15. So basically 10 years of high profile, you know, racing and, and trying to do all the right things and, and, and also like build, build my name, build my resume. But I think for me, like the number one thing I take away is, is experience, you know, like if I could tell my 15 year old self, like, Hey man, you know, you need to relax. You don't need to, you know, push this hard all the time because I'm, I'm a very, I have a very aggressive racing style. And, um, just like this weekend, what I was telling you, like laying back, if you would have told 15 year old gray to lay back, he would have said, Hey, you're crazy. I'm here to win, which I understand that. Like you, you, I have that mindset of wanting to win, but you know, when you, when you race for as long as I have and, and, um, and have seen the things I've, I've had life lessons. I've, I've learned so much, like you have to live and learn, you know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, just like everybody in this world, like you grow, you learn, you, you know, you live and learn, like it's part of it and racing is the same way. So I think for me, you know, Turning pro and, and being in NASCAR at a young age, it's it's actually very hard. I, 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 I feel like I did a good job with it, but, you know, like, I just thought most of the time, like, I knew I knew what was going on all the time, right? My yeah. younger, and as I got older and I got wiser and I started to learn the, the good lessons, the bad lessons, you know, you really take, take those things and you hold on to them to be like, man, okay this is what I need to do next time. You know what I mean? So it, uh, it's, it's been a, it's been a great roller coaster of a ride, you know, to, to be able to been doing this, this long. I mean, I'm, I'm from a small town in Virginia, never thought that I would even have the opportunity, you know, to make it big or, you know, get to cup or get to Xfinity, that type thing. So, 
Um, you know, like I said, it's been a life lesson ever since I, I turned pro, but, uh, I'm glad I did. And, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy where I'm at now. You know what I mean? So yeah. everything happens for a reason and, um, very, very satisfied where I'm at now. You know, when I was 15, I was tinkering on cars and trucks for fun. You were flying around a racetrack. You've been, right. like you said, for 10 years now, yeah. Most guys at 25 don't have that level of experience, you know, so kind of does that you feel give you a leg up maybe on some of the other guys that are closer to your age? No, you know, I, I don't think so because yeah, you know, I've been able to race a lot of, a lot of huge races. I mean, I was 19 years old racing in the Daytona 500. That was always my dream was, um, you know, to, to make it to that, that point to, to race the biggest race in the world, which for me, was always the Daytona 500 and that was always my goal. But um, no, I don't, I don't really think I have a leg up because, you know, I feel like every driver uh, truly has their own story. And I think with me, you know, I have, I have my own story also, you know, I'm a grinder. I work hard. Any, anything that I put my head into, like whether it's racing, golfing, bowling, like I want to be the best of the best. Like I, I just have that competitive edge and I think, and I think, you know, a lot, a lot of drivers also have that too. But once again, like I said, we all have our own story. And I think for me, you know, to come up, to be brought up by a great family, my mom and dad, my sisters, I had a great family, great, uh, you know, supportive system that pushed me and um, they didn't push me to, you know, be a professional driver. They always knew I wanted that, but um, you know, to have that support system behind me, really drove me in, in a good state of mind growing up being, you know, 14, 15, 16, you know, those are very tough years for a young teenager, especially trying to, you know, I had Krispy Kreme as a sponsor. Like I had, a, I had a lot of shoes to fill and a lot of pressure on me, but I think I really, you know, I think, I, I think I did a pretty good job, honestly. And I, and I'm glad I made it through. And um, like I said, you know, I'm, 25 now I feel like an old man like I'm like I'm a, 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 a veteran now I used to be known as the kid now I'm not really a kid anymore so um I kind of have to fill those shoes but any driver coming up like a young driver like my teammate you know uh Blaine Perkins he's my teammate this year he's only 22 I call him a baby which he's not he uh he knows what to do but I'm just saying like it's it's weird for me because I've been always so used to being the guy that like I'm looking up to my teammate or this guy and now to have a teammate um, that is younger than me, that kind of looks to me for advice, you know, it's, it's kind of a different role, but I, I really enjoy that. And um, you know, it's uh, it's, it's nice. It's It's different. You know what I mean? So I, I, I like the, the, the difference of the way I was brought up to now. So I would, to answer your question, I wouldn't say I have a leg up. Cause like I said, every driver, comes from a new city, a different city, and we all have our own story. Got you. Got you. Now, your last full season with SS, you know, uh, Greenlight in 2019, is there a bit of a different approach now from Greg Alding as there was in 19? Yeah. How has that role kind of changed for you? You talk about these changing roles. How, how much of a difference is there there? Well, no, I think for me, you know, like, you know, you don't really want a points race, right? We're all competitors. Like you, you want to win, you want to, um, you know, take a 20th place car and finish 15th with it. Right. But I think for me, like where I'm at in my career and, and where I, I, I see myself going, I, I really want to think a lot of races through that I maybe didn't in the past, you know what I mean? Being aggressive. Like I said, I have a very aggressive um, racing style and I, and you know, I, I kind of wear, you know, my head, on my sleeve, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm a fiery guy, but like, just like Daytona, like riding and, and, and actually being very methodical with my moves, with the way I saw the race play out, it played out exactly the way I saw it in my head. Yes. I ran out of fuel, unfortunately, but I gave myself a chance to win. That's the main goal. Right. Yeah. So I see myself, you know, just like this weekend, you know, I would love to, you know, if we finish, Top 15. That's a great points day. You know, I have, I have a lot to, um, a lot of work to do as far as, you know, having that chemistry with my crew chief, Jason Miller, you know, yes, we know each other. We're personal, good friends, but I'm saying he doesn't really know my style yet. And I don't really know his style yet. So I think it'll take, 
three to five weeks to really understand that. So if we show up this weekend, you know, and get a top 15, top 20, that's a good day. Yes, I, you know, we all want more, but I'm saying realistic goals. I, I, I feel my 25 year old self compared to the to 2019 self. Like I want, I wanted everything right off the bat. And um, I still do, but I, I, I'm more at a realistic level. You know what I mean? Because it takes a lot. I mean, think about it. We're racing the best of the best week in and week out. The best teams, the best drivers. And it takes time, you know, to, to really understand each other as crews, as crew chiefs, driver, you know, that type thing. So, you know, if I could tell my 2019-year-old self, like, yes, we had an unbelievable year. I mean, finished 13th in the points. Um, second twice, you know, almost, you know, six at Bristol with Patrick Mahomes. Like those are great, but I'm saying it did take time to really get that chemistry from, from a whole, from a driver, crew chief, team owner, that type thing. So I think now more now than ever, I have really understood that, but that I didn't understand in the past, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And when it comes to, you know, this weekend at Fontana, this is a track you said that is your favorite. Can you tell me kind of why, 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 why is this one so high up on the list for you? Honestly, like I, I, I think because it's worn out, like I always love, like right before they, uh, they paved Atlanta, like Atlanta was one of my favorite tracks, you know, after three laps, your tires are gone. And I feel like all those tra type tracks make for the best racing because, you know, when you're, when you're racing and, you know, three, four laps into a run, your tires are gone. It really shows the best of the best of drivers, whether not necessarily car, but, you know, I grew up racing um, the past series, which we, we had no pit stops. So you had to save your tires. So, you know, when I go to tracks like that, I, I feel like I do have a, a, some type of edge because I have a lot of, uh, of experience, but also like, I enjoy it. I love, you know, sliding the car around, you know, sideways, the tires are gone. You know, you, you have no side bite with the body and all that type of stuff kind of brings me back to my roots. So, um, no, that's probably, probably why I love Fontana. It's a very wide track. You can run the top, you can run the bottom, the middle, you know, there's like five grooves there. So, you know, there's, there's not anywhere you can't run at Fontana. So if your car sucks on the bottom, you can go to the top and, and, you know, you, you kind of have an escape route no matter what um, throughout throughout the race. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, you know, like I said, my, I think my crew chief has got a good setup and and uh, we'll just kind of have to feel it out, you know. So uh, good. It feels good to get back on a, on a real racetrack. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, Daytona is kind of its, its own beast. You're wide open. But to actually get to a real racetrack that you got to, you know, throttle, brake, that type thing, you know, arc in the corner, that matters. I'm looking forward to getting back to a track like that. You know, you talked about those roots in the, in the, in the kind of lower series like that, you know, Fed series, you're, you're having to save tires, everything like that. How much from the numerous, you know, smaller series that you've raced in and won in, uh, what, what all like, I guess what I'm trying to say is how much of that is transferred. You know, I'm, I'm sure you can take a lot of it. What exactly do you take from those races? Well, I think for me, I mean, definitely the tire management because, you know, racing in the past, I mean, I was racing against Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Brett Moffitt, you know, just to name a few. I mean, it was, I mean, the guys you see nowadays racing on Sunday, that's who I was racing when I was 12 years old. You know what I mean? So, you learn so much from them as drivers and as competitors, but also, you know, like I said, the, the tire management, you know, not having a pit stop, having to make sure that you got a 150 lap race, you got to make sure you got tires to go, to go at it at the end, you know? So um, I, I would definitely say a lot of my roots has, um, you know, kind of transpired into the, the truck series, the Xfinity series, cup series. And like I said, I told you earlier, I have a very aggressive, driving style well i grew up racing legend cars well to pass in a legend car you got to move the guy out of the way right so yeah. it took me a little bit once i got to the you know the super late models and the k and N. I i was knocking noses off every week and my my crew chiefs and my team owners were like dude you got you've hit everything but the pace car and i was like man like it it, it takes it takes that time to understand and to learn and uh, for me, you know, like I said, with that aggressive style, I couldn't do that once I got to the the next level. 
you know, you didn't have a bumper like a legend car. You had to, um, you know, you actually had to learn how to pass them, not drive through them. You had to pass them. So I've, uh, I've had a lot of, lot of life lessons that I've learned through the lower series from legend cars, past series, K and N and, and, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's definitely molded me into the driver I am today in, in a good way, because like I said, there's nothing I haven't been through yet. You know what I mean? Like good or bad. I feel like I've kind of covered everything. So now as a 25 year old driver that's racing at, you know, at a high level, like you have, like those life lessons are very, very valuable down the road. So yes, I definitely see myself coming from the legend car days, the past series, like it, it, it definitely transpires in, into where I'm at today, for sure. And, you know, you talk about those guys on Sundays. And I, I know you have to see them out and everything. You ever just mention, like, you remember that time that I kind of waxed you in the k and <laughs> series years ago? No, honestly, I – um no, I don't really – I you know, I, there, there's a couple guys that, like, I, I was telling someone the other day, it's funny because um, I was always the young buck. I, I was part of the NASCAR Next group, which NASCAR picked – uh, I think there was like 14 drivers that they thought that were going to be like the future face of NASCAR in which I'm so appreciative and fortunate. I was picked at only 15 years old, 15 and 16. I got picked back to back years, which is really, really awesome. Um, but I was the young guy. I was like, you know, there were certain drivers that were, you know, Jeb Burton, um, Corey LaJoy, you know, Chase Elliott, um, Ryan Blaney, the, Bubba Wallace was in in my group like all those guys were older than me so I had to kind of like do my own thing you know what I mean they go out like when we were in Chicago they go out want to go to bars and you know that type scene which totally understand you know um but for me what's funny is like my roommates were Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott so we were the young bucks so we would sit in the room and play cards we play cards and and sit there and laugh and, and goof off. I'm, I'll never forget we, me and Chase Elliott were, were like, like I said, we, we, we didn't have fake IDs. We couldn't go out all the rest of the group walked out, uh, you know, ran out and wanted to do the nightlife. Well, me and Chase Elliott were stuck in the room. So me and him were playing cards, watching TV, watching Seinfeld, having a good time. Like, like you, you kind of forget though, you know, th those moments. And now, you know, I, I, like I said, I've raced Chase for a long time to see that he's been so successful and, and I wish him nothing but the best, but it really makes you kind of come back to like, dude, do you remember when me and you were playing cards because we were too young to go to the bars? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it's, it's really funny now that I think about it. Cause I'm 25 and I think he's 20, 27, 28, you know, we were just young kids just living the dream, you know, trying to make our way. And, and uh, now he's, you know, won a lot of cup races you know, he's a champion, you know, so it uh, gives me a lot of drive because I know he was, uh, we were roommates and he was a little bit older, but I'm saying it gives me drive as a competitor to be like, man, I remember, I remember those days and I, I know I can get there too, you know? So yeah, a lot of, a lot of good stories, man. A lot of good stories. I, I imagine, I imagine you wouldn't, uh, surely there's no Bill Elliott stories about y'all's time uh, in that series. No, no, no. Honestly, Bill, Bill is such a, he's, he's a Southern, he's a Southern bell, man. I tell you, he is the nicest guy. And it was funny is like, you know, Chase has so many shoes to fill because everybody loves Bill. Right. Well, I never met Bill until we were in a NASCAR next program together. And now I know why everybody rooted for him. He is just the nicest guy you could ever imagine. Like it's hard to believe that he was a high profile cup driver champion Daytona. Like he is just a good old boy. You know what I mean? Like, so I totally understand where all the fans come from now. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> when, it, well, when it comes to, you know, back to today, back to, you know, what's ahead, you know, uh, what is the ultimate goal for Greg Alding for this, this 2023 Xfinity season? You know, it's brand new, uh, new set of wheels, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of just new things around the sport. Uh, what what is kind of the goal? Are you trying to take it all in? Are you trying? You know, is is it? You know, what's the next step? No, I um, to be honest with you, you know, I'm I'm trying to take it all in, man. Like you have to understand, you know, being out of the series full time, uh, the last two years. I mean, it's it's hard on me because I I know I belong there. I know I know I put the work in. I know 
you know, I checked those boxes and it, not in a cocky way at all, but I'm saying the amount of time and effort and, and studying I do, I know I deserve a full-time ride. And when Bobby came to me and said, Hey man, I want, I want to sign you full-time. I want you in driving the zero eight, knowing that that zero eight number has so much, you know, um, you know, a, a lot of success as far as my heart and, and, um, you know, my past, that was my first bandolero number because of Bobby daughter. And, um, it's just a perfect storm, man. Like it really is like, I'm, I, I think for me, I'm just taking it all in week by week. You know, I'm, I'm so looking forward to this week. Like I never, I never ran a race or, or, or during, throughout the season being so looking forward to like, man, I left the track and I'm very sad. Like, you know what I mean? Some guys, you know, in the past, I was like, man, that was a drag. You know, I'm glad that race is over with. Like, I cannot wait to get to Fontana. I, I, I could get on a flight right now and be ready for Fontana because I've just missed it so much, you know. So I, I've kind of told myself to really enjoy the moment. You know, don't don't think too much into it. You know, um, be appreciative. You know, have some fun. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like Daytona th this past weekend for me was just a lot of fun. Like, I joked around with my guys. I was like, "Hey, guys, we're in, we're in the race. Let's let's just go do our thing. You know, let's do let's do what we do best. Um, you know, race at a high level and and have fun with it. So, uh, like I said, just enjoy the moment, have fun with it, and 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 just be appreciative. And I I tell you, man, all three of those things I really am because. I've missed being full time. I've missed this team. I've missed Bobby Daughter, and I'm just so fortunate to be where I'm at right now. and And I'm very, very satisfied. So I'm gonna take it week to week. I'm gonna keep working hard. I'm gonna uh, every week that we get back, I'm gonna work with my teammate, work with my crew chief, uh, Blaine's crew chief, Mike Hillman. Me and him have a pass together, uh, working together. So yeah, th things are good in the neighborhood right now for me. So I'm just gonna take it week by week. I got you. Well, man, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you got a busy schedule ahead of you. You guys, I think they said, are headed out Thursday? Yes, yeah, sir. Thursday, yep. Got you. Well, man, like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. I really appreciate you sitting down with me. It's been awesome. Um, uh, I'm sure I'll, this will be up soon. Uh, like I said, I just appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time. Hey, thank you so much for the time, man. Anything I can do to help you or be on your show, man, please please call me up anytime. I'll, I'll be down. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do a show. Uh, I think we do a show every week. So uh, you'll, okay. you'll call me anytime. Call on, man. For real. Yes, sir. All, All right, right, brother. Have a good good evening and uh, we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Take it easy. This is Austin Dillon, driver of the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those two videos beside me. Visit frontstretch.com for more racing content.